In today's video, we're going to talk about three ways to escape the rat race. Hello, if you're new to the channel, my name is Jonathan Little John, and we focus on making money, investing money, and building passive income online. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, so then you will be notified when we upload new videos. Enjoy. Right before we get into it, what is the rat race? My definition of the rat race is it's like a revolving door. It's like when you go to the hotel and you're walking through that door and it keeps going around and around and around and you're able to get out on the other side, but you're, you're also able to get stuck in there and keep going around and around. That's the rat race. And so many people are stuck in that rat race. And what I'm talking about is getting paid at their nine to five job, working the next 20 years, working the next 40 years, and never really improving or growing as a person or financially or just personally. I heard a quote one time, the guy said, I'd rather live one year different than 75 years the same. And that really hit me. So every year you need to constantly improve. And like I said before, you want to have that Kaizen mindset. That Kaizen is never ending improvement. Constantly never ending improvement. You want to co consistently grow. Dad always told me and my brother and mom always told us that if you're not growing, you're dying. It's like the grass. If the grass isn't growing, it's dying. So I want you guys to grow. So. I'm going to share three ways to escape the rat race. The number one way is being able to budget correctly. And a lot of people get it confused. They always say, well, if I want to get financially free, I need to make more money. A lot of people, they think making more money gets you closer to financial freedom. And it, and, and it does. It really does. But what happens is, if you haven't created the cure, okay, found out the cure of being financially free, what it takes, it doesn't matter if you're gonna make more money because what will happen is you're gonna make more money and buy bigger toys because you really haven't got the foundation of getting out of the rat race. And what I'm talking about is how are you gonna be able to do algebra if you do not know how to add and subtract? So many people, and that's, and that's the thing, so many people, they're saying, I need to make more money, I need to make more money. But do you really know the number one thing is being able to budget correctly? That's number one, is being able to budget. Whatever you have, you need to be able to budget correctly, okay? And, and what I'm doing with my personal finance and other people that ask me questions, and I tell them, I'm just giving you guys suggestions. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just trying to help you uh, make suggestions, but I'm not an advisor. I don't want no one to think I'm an advisor. I'm not, okay? I'm just going along with the process right with you guys. You don't have to do what I'm doing, but just take it in. Is I, I follow the 50, 30, 20 rule, okay? 50, 30, 20. And, and what that is, is 50% of my money that I earn goes to what I need to live, the, the things like a, a roof over my head, driving the car, the gas that goes into my car, the electric, the water, all those things, those are the things that I need to live. Food, okay, that's the 50%. The next thing is the 30%, and the 30% is what I wanna call the wants, the entertainment. Not actually going out all the time, but maybe I wanna go out to eat. Not, I'm not talking about going out to the bar, but I'm talking about going out to eat to a nice restaurant, getting that Netflix account, going on a vacation. Okay, that's that 30% that I'm saving up for right there. Then the 20% you wanna put in your investment, 
in your savings. So you wanna put your investment to 20%, investment, savings, and I like to give to churches, so charity. I do that also for the charity. And, and right there, you'll be able to escape the rat race because you're, you're really budgeting. I see so many people, they say, all right, well, this paycheck here, I'm going and putting it all towards the bills. And this paycheck here, I'm going and putting it towards my Christmas. And this paycheck, I'm putting it towards the vacation. You don't have a correct budgeting plan, a system. So it goes to number two. Number two is increase your income, all right? But the thing is, if you did number two as number one, you would still be going out the world backwards because you would be buying bigger toys. You would still be like, all right, I make this amount of money, I can go ahead and take this check and put it there, or take this check and put it over there, okay? But the thing is, you have to be able to systematically budget for the future, okay? So whenever something happens, you're able to adjust. So if you just follow the 50, 30, 20 rule, 50% is what you need to live on, 30% is what you want to, want, what you want, you know, vacations, Netflix, going out to eat with your friends, maybe going out to the bar, going out to the club, that 30% and that's, and you say that's it, going to the amusement parks, and you just focus on that. And then the 20% towards your charity, towards your investment, towards your saving, okay? And you work that, I guarantee you, you will get out the rat race. You will be growing fast and fast and faster, getting better with your finances. You'll start finding money all over because you'll start attracting it. So that's, that's number one. Number two is increase your income. Not now, now a lot of people, they get this confused what I'm talking about, okay? I'm breaking it down. Get incre uh, increase your income with a hobby. So make your hobby monetized. I remember a high school teacher, he, he told me one time, he said, Jonathan, find a profession that you love to do. Because when you find that profession that you love to do, it won't seem like it's work because you enjoy it. And, and so many people I talk to, they, instead of them uh, monetizing their hobby, what they're doing is they're finding another job and they already don't like the job that they're in and they find another job that's one paying less, but they're increasing their money because they have two jobs, but it's paying less and then they don't like it. Why make yourself miserable? It's, it, it doesn't make sense to make yourself miserable. Try to find a hobby and monetize it. If you like painting, try to figure out how you can sell your paintings. If you like photography, try to figure out how you can do photo shoots and, and get people to pay you to take pictures of them. Uh, if, you, if you like making food, why don't you try to start selling dinners or get a little food trailer and sell food out of the trailer. Try to increase your money, but with a hobby, okay? And monetize, if it's building websites, try to start building websites and charging people for it. Or maybe you're a great piano player, start teaching people how to play a piano. Or maybe if you're a great singer, help someone out how to sing and so forth. A ballet, teach someone. There's all kinds of ways and, and, and you have to focus on your hobby because if you can get your hobby to make money, you'll enjoy it. You won't see as it as, oh, I can't believe it's Monday. Thank God it's Friday. It won't be like that because you, you're excited. You're, you're, you're energized. You can't wait to wake up to start going after your dreams. So that's number two, making money with your hobby. And the last one is making smart investments. And there's a, there's a great book out there. It's uh, called The Richest Man of Babylon. And it's very good. I recommend you guys read it if you're really trying to become financially free. Read that book. I read it and I reread it and I keep reading it because I really don't got it all the way. And you really gotta really read to reread to really understand it. 
in the book, it talks about there was a particular character and he was trying to learn finances. So the wise man comes to him and he tells him, hey, save up so much money. Then next thing you know, you gotta have your money making money. So, so what the guy did was he saved up all the money like the guy told him for a whole year. Then he tells his buddy, hey man, I got this money. He told his buddy to save, so he saved the money also. So they got, they got basically his money and his friend's money, years worth of saving, saved up. And they go overseas to buy diamonds. Now they bought the diamonds, they brought them back and they find out the diamonds were fake. He tells uh, his mentor, he says, hey man, I saved up a year's worth of money and me and my buddy, we put our money together and we bought some diamonds and it came back, the diamonds were fake. And the guy said, who was your friend? And who did you buy your diamonds from? And the, the particular character said, well, the guy, he, he's a baker and he told me he had a friend that had diamonds over here. And his mentor said, you don't talk to the baker about finances. You talk to the baker about baking. And so many people, they will give you great investments. They say, oh, you need to invest in this. But they're not a special, they're not an expert in that investment. They might be the, the garbage man or, 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 or the school teacher. They're not the expert. You need to talk to the expert. You know what I mean? If you want to talk to the teacher, talk to the teacher how to teach students because they know they're the expert in teaching. If you want to talk to the basketball player, talk to the basketball player how to be a better basketball player or a football player or a nurse or a doctor. But if you're trying to talk about finances and investment, you need to talk to someone that knows finance, that knows investing. So there, that's number three, getting smart investments all right doing smart investments and that could be buying stocks buying real estate putting your money in savings accounts putting your money in stocks putting your money in cds a lot of a lot of these smart investments take small amounts of money and also they give you a small reward but it's a guarantee you know what i mean it's a guarantee there's a guarantee on a uh, return on your money. Now there's some, there's some, now I'm not saying all investments are like that, but there are some investments, they're more risky, but they have a bigger reward. I'm not advising you to do that. I'm not telling you to do that. Okay, you need to do your own research. You gotta, you gotta be able to, as my cousin always say, get in your lane. You gotta be able to fit in your comfort zone. What are you comfortable with investing? Maybe it's investing in a 401k, uh, or maybe it's a, an investment in a savings account. But you have to research and do what do you think the best investment that you're willing to live with if it fails. But I see so many people, they put all their eggs in a basket because they had that lottery mindset. And what I'm talking about, that lottery mindset, they wanna throw it all, throw all the dice to hit the hit it big but what happens is they roll the dice they're they're growing and then they touch it and when they touch it they lose so so what i'm what i'm suggesting you do is that when you're doing these smart investments once you put them in as my brother always said set and forget set the money in there and forget about it don't even look at it. Don't if it's if it's the stock market. Don't even look at that stock market because it, it's going to go down and up, down and up. And when it's down, you're going to be get really nervous. And when it's up, you're going to get excited. So don't don't look at it. Just don't look at it. If you have to look at it, that means you can't lose it. So don't don't put too much in there if you're not comfortable with losing it. It's back to 50, 30, 20. 50% of your money you want to live off of your needs. 30% of your money you want to do things that you want to do. Enjoyment, entertainment, and 20% of your money is your savings, your investing, your charity. Now, to shorten your retirement curve, because if you do this 50, 30, 20 rule, 
you can retire in 30 years. And sometimes a lot of people are, are retiring. If they start at 20, they can retire by the time they're 40. And to move your process faster, all you have to do is switch the numbers. And what I'm talking about, and this is very powerful, if you switch the numbers, if you're able to live with less entertainment, you can actually work less. And what I'm talking about, less amount of years. Okay, you might not have to work the 30 to 40 years. You could maybe work 20 to 30 years and you'll be able to retire earlier. And what I'm talking about is 50% you're putting in your need, what you gotta live off of. 30% you're putting it as now your investment in your savings. And 20% is your entertainment. You just switched it because before it was 30 for your entertainment, 20 for your saving and investing. But we just switched it to 30 for your saving investing, 20 for your entertainment. And then you still have your, your side hustle and, and we're calling that your money that you're creating from your hobby. And if you put that, you could put that in your 30 and all that money could be going to your savings and investing. So now really you're got 50% investing, another 50% in your saving and investing and 20% in your entertainment. You got to really get your budgeting down correctly. So with a recap, you want to do the 50, 30, 20 rule. That's number one. Number two is find a hobby to make money from. If you're good at something, make your hobby monetized. Get monetization out of your hobby because you already enjoy it. So you need to, there's people already willing to pay for what you know how to do really good. And number three is make smart investments. Just don't make investments just to say you made an investment. Make smart investments. If you like this type of information, hit the like button, subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. Now, and, and also, I want you to share this with someone you think needs help budgeting. Let me know in the comments section, is there any other uh, tactics that you guys have to escape the rat race, to get out of your nine to five job? Let me know in the comments section below. Have a nice one. See you next time.